Without wasting too much of your time, let's hop right into Resolve and get to the reason why you clicked on this video. And after we learn how to do the retime curve controls in Resolve, if you stick around, I'll show you a few more tricks that you can do with the speed editing tools that you have in DaVinci Resolve. First, to access any of your speed control tools, you right click on the clip and they're all right here in this section. The first one we're going to open up is the Retime Controls, or Command R for short, and the next one that we really need is the Retime Curve. Now, the important thing to note about the Curve Editor is that you need to be zoomed in far enough so that you can see the controls on the left and the right side. Once you can see those, you can right click on the drop down arrow, and we're going to switch this from showing Retime Frame, just uncheck that, to showing Retime Speed. Now the graph gives us a curve editor that we can adjust the speed on. Now we can simply drag the playhead to wherever we want to start the speed ramp and click the Add Keyframe button. Or you can hold the Option key and add a keyframe wherever you want. Now that we've done that, we can simply use the mouse and drag up to speed up that portion of the clip, or drag down to slow down the portion of the clip. For this one, I'm going to be speeding this way up like a time lapse. And you'll notice two things. First, it gives you these hard transitions from normal speed of 100% to wherever I drag it up. We'll address that in just a second. But for something like this, for like a really long time lapse, if you want to go way faster, you can only drag up to 300% by default. To change that, all you have to do is hover your mouse over this 300 here, click, and then drag that up. And that controls how much you can see on the y-axis of this graph. So I'll just drag that up to about 2,000-ish. Then I can grab my speed again and drag it up however high I want. And if we zoom in a little bit, because I opened that retime controls, you can see here exactly what that speed is set to. Now if I want to smooth out this graph, all I have to do is select the keyframe and then click this button here to add the Bezier handles to curve it out. Now unfortunately you can't select both of these at the same time, but it's not too much trouble to do it one at a time. Once you have those handles though, you can control the ramp up speed or ramp down speed if you're doing slow motion. It works the same way for slow motion, just instead of pulling that graph up like I did, you pull it down. And if for some reason you need to see a lot more of that graph than 10% or whatever the default is, you can do that by adjusting the Y value down here on the bottom right or bottom left. If you're using the Retime Curve Editor frequently, I highly recommend adding a keyboard shortcut to that. I personally use Command-Shift-C, and to do that, all you have to do is open up the DaVinci Resolve menu, go to Keyboard Customizations, and the easiest way to find the command is to click on All Commands, go to the search box, type in Retime, find Retime Curve, click there, and record whatever hotkey you want it to be. Hit Save, and then you can quickly open up the Retime Curves. And if all you want to do is change the speed of an entire clip, either speed it up or slow it down, you don't want to mess with any of this, all you have to do is right click, select Change Clip Speed, and set your speed to whatever you need it to be. And again, if you don't have a hotkey set up for that, I highly recommend doing it. I have mine set to Command Shift R. Now we'll get into a few more things that you can do with the speed controls and different ways that you can handle the nuances of retiming things. Now the first thing, in case you didn't already know, is that you can copy and paste those speed retime controls, including the ones that we just did in the graph editor. To do that, all you have to do is simply hit Command C on the clip that you want to copy from, select the clip that you want to apply to, hit Option or Alt V to paste those attributes. We'll make sure that retime effects is selected and hit apply. You'll know that those effects are applied because you can see the clip change in length and you can see the little retime icon there. But to confirm and adjust those settings, we can open up our curve editor once again and you can see those effects that we applied. If we zoom in and then adjust our zoom range so that we can see what we did again, you'll see that those are the exact same speed ramps that we just applied. You're probably really infrequently copy and pasting from the same exact clip, but to save time, if this was a different clip, all you have to do is open up the Curve Editor, select those keyframes, and drag them around to change your start and end positions. This is also where the retime frame graph could come in handy, is if we can drag these start points around for the retime frame, and more precisely control which frame the speed ramp starts at, rather than a certain point in time. And this is where we can start to talk about retime frame versus retime speed and where it might come in handy. The speed graph really gives you those fine grained controls of being able to adjust the clip speed and ripple the time of the clip to adjust to hit those speeds exactly how you want it. Whereas the retime frame clips really gives you that fine grained control of where that clip lands in the timeline and it'll adjust the speed of that clip and the clips around it so that that speed change happens at a specific point in time. This is particularly useful if you're editing to the beat or something and you really wanted to stretch out the clip before it so that you would nail that timing of when that change happens of an edit. This is what you can use to do that. 
And while we have these retime controls open, if you wanted to add a freeze frame, all you have to do is click on the retime control arrow here, select freeze frame, and that'll just automatically add two points on the retime frame curve for you and set the speed to zero. And if you wanted to adjust the speed of that freeze frame, just use those regular retime controls at the top. Messing with the curve will really change the way the speed is handled and probably confuse you. And if you end up in a state where your clip is completely messed up, just click on any of those drop down arrows from the retime curves and select reset clip. If you found any value in this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already familiar with the types of videos that I normally create, all about leveling up your videos and storytelling, make sure to check out this one here that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel and you want to see more quick tutorials like this for either Resolve or Premiere or something like that, let me know down in the comments. And until the next one, bye for now.